Shiny. shiny what do I think about it? Yeah. I think it's shiny. All right. Toast. What's up? I kind of want to know your opinion about Saki Zenobashi. Um, I was just curious. Uh, okay. Yes, um, sir. Yes, sir. I recently saw the Blame It on George video on it when he did the iceberg thing, and um, I thought it was interesting. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I just had breakfast. Oh, yeah. So horny. Mm, yeah. Welcome back to part 2 of the series. Here we go again with the rest of the entry to Saki Iceberg. Also, since part one of the iceberg, there has been new developments to the project, and congrats to Rescue Studios for the 18k views in the Saki animation. I'm pretty happy for them and seeing their hard work pay off, so I wish to see that for other entries in the Saki fandom. Alright, that's enough of that. Some other things I want to point out before going into the rest is that the reason I took so long to post this next video is because I wanted to wait a bit for some developments and also wanted to just find a couple more projects that I had forgotten to add on here. And plus I was going through some things in life. Also, another correction. So in the last video I showcased an art piece for the Game Boy Saki entry and in the comments somebody told me that that was made by the friend Machi Guy. So credit for it's due. Alright, on to the next tier. Tier 6. Bloody Bunny. This artist goes by many names, but I mostly know their Saki fan work on Instagram, though it's also been shared in Reddit. Now currently known as Kenner the Great, they made some notable Saki fan work, some inspired by my designs. Super gory and NSFW. Saki Sanobashi Manga, U slash Beastar Jam. Another manga series proposed by another member in the Saki fandom. The artist in question discussed making a manga series for Saki instead of a game or animation as it would be much easier saying they would create nine girls for the story in a classical shoujo style. And dear god the hair keeps getting bigger. This proposition was announced two years ago, whether they're still working on it or not is unknown. Yugen Vini Saki Sanobashi. Another song with Saki Sanobashi as the title, it's a screamo rap song where the dude probably only mentions anything related to Saki once and it's like in the beginning he's screaming something like, go for a punch. Go for a punch. Other than that, it's mostly lyrics about sancto religious dogma or something, I'm, I'm not sure. I think the meaning got lost in the sauce somewhere, but who fucking cares? They don't know this man's gospel validity. They don't know your gospel's validity. They don't know your gospel's validity. Saki OP GIF. R slash Saki Sanobashitsu background art. An art piece created by user U slash bunny eggs that was made background art of the r slash Saki Sanobashitsu server. Saki cosplay, Meru Kitty. Probably the only cosplay done in relation to Saki Sanobashi, this cosplayer made her own version of Saki and shared it on her TikTok and Instagram. I only found out about her because she tagged me in her post to give me credit for my opening title animation that she utilized. It's a pretty awesome cosplay given it's an internet urban legend, but she still went above and beyond with the outfit and doing blood and wound makeup and acting out her scenes. Cool overall. Kiyoki. Saki Sanobashi is my favorite hentai. Yeah boy. Yet another rap song with Saki Sanobashi in the title. Another scream rap song but this one takes distortion to such high levels that it's almost unintelligible what they're saying. You can't understand a word. But who cares? The beat slaps just as hard as when I'm trying to get a signal from an old TV set. And the lyrics are so thought-provoking and very reflective of the times when this was made. I think everyone should give this one a listen. Tier 7 Endeavor writes Saki Sanobashi. This is a one hour, yes, that's right, a one hour long Saki Sanobashi film. Holy oh, shit! Created in the format and style of analog horror videos. I see a lot of inspirations of college art graduation films, the hero got the commercial legend, and analog horror tropes in this one. The premise for this film... Uh, well, this one's gonna be based on what I cured from watching it because the way it's all in black and white and like images pop in and out and cut to like random old films like commercials and stuff and it's all just like really confusing similar to like the film Begotten. 
But from what I got of the film is that there's like this girl named Akemi who gets like bullied by the kids in a small village, I think. But then there's like this other girl or guy. Yeah, I think their name is like Isemu. And like, I guess either Ikemi likes them or they like her. I don't remember. But then there's like this urban legend being spread around about these like supernatural stuff. And then I think like a priest pops up and like tells Saki she must be sacrificed in order to do the ritual. Also, the students do like this 100 ghost stories thing or something. I don't remember if that was related to the priest. And then like Akemi is like purified. Uh... I remember the, the purification part of the film being like the most disturbing to me because like the sound design and the premise that I somewhat got out of it, it was all kind of creepy. And then like Saki's crucified or something. I guess Saki was also a character in the film, like her full name is Saki Sonobashi in the film. Again, I tried to understand the premise and watch the film like two or three times. But if it's meant to be like interpreted by the viewer or something like, oh, this it's up to you to, to figure it out, then I'd say it's a film about like bowling bad spirits, and the occult. Well, that's what I got out of it. Still not sure what some of the analog horror elements had to do with anything, but that's just my interpretation. Overall, probably one of the most confusing projects of this iceberg. The film is kind of like, I'd say, something you'd watch like one time just for the curiosity, and it does kind of leave you wondering what the fuck you just watched. So it's, I guess it kind of got that part down for the whole Saki lore. So I'll give it props for that. And on a recent update, they also added a five more minutes to the film which i think completely changes the whole premise i don't know i didn't watch that one saki sanobashi nixon 1960 para este tópico voy a hablar en español para que lo más mis hermanos hispanos pueden entender básicamente es un concepto que un copia de saki sanobashi que por suerte llegó a los manos del presidente nixon y como la película le impactó tanto que cambió muchas de sus regulaciones durante su tiempo en el calco y también elige no participar en el escándalo de watergate lo que le llevó a cumplir otros cuatro años en su mandato, cambiando el curso de la historia y... <risa> no, solo estoy bromeando. En realidad es una historia alternativa creada por alguien conocido por Nixon 1960, también conocido como Alexander Gunster. Básicamente describe una historia alternativa donde no solo se encuentra Saki Sonobashi, sino en realidad se convirtió en una serie popular de Japón con un total de cinco temporadas y 100 episodios. En resumen, entra en detalles sobre la serialización, la adaptación del anime y la distribución en países latinoamericanos para el dub. Una toma interesante para un medio perdido. The Lost Anime Animation Saki Sanobashi Go For A Punch Fan Made Animation by Rainimations. That is such a tongue twister. This is a video created by Rainimations that serves more as a retelling of this urban legend similar to many other YouTube videos that usually cover the topic of the search of Saki Sanobashi. But because the bulk of the video is about retelling the story and it has some animation, it still counts. For what it is, it's cheap and there's really not much to say. But it's charming nonetheless. I have nothing else to say about it. I mean, it's kind of sad that the creator of this only made about three videos and then just kind of completely disappeared. They had a potential. Oh well. Saki Sanobashi, Go For A Punch, Full Recreation, Recato Sombrio. Another animation created by yet another animator. This one was made with limited animation and the artwork was... It literally looks like it was made in MS Paint. And I'm right, because literally in the description it says that they made this in MS Paint. And despite the YouTube video having like two minutes of length, half of it is used for the credits. So you're really just watching a one minute MS Paint slideshow of Saki Sanobashi. Something has to happen. Blob. Clocking in at only 36 seconds. Just another animation that feels more like an animation meme than anything else with how fast paced the scenes go by in a company to music. Nothing much else goes on beside a couple of scenes and that's pretty much it. The sketchiness and the fast pace of the animations kind of reminds me of my storyboard trailer, not gonna lie. Saki Sanobashi Koniko. Another song with Saki Sanobashi in the title. Yay. But this time, no screamo rap. Instead, this song is more in the style of like melodic cloud rap with like hints of like hyper pop elements. Tonight, 
The best that I can compare it to is like similar to the softcore gang music with artists like User 4AM, Leclerc, Eva Demi Mendiabla, and Stradine. You know, for those who like that kind of style of music and want to find more of it. Wink wink. Overall, I like this kind of music and I'm definitely adding this one to my playlist. Tier 8. U slash Hama 2547. This person is the creator of the headbanging Saki Kif. U slash G to the B. Another artist in the subreddit roster, and they created some super gory art similar in intensity like Bashix, but with more dirty and grungy look. Overall, just a lot of fan art of Saki for the most part. Mark Disaster, go for a punch. This one is basically another song, but it looks like it kind of got buried under everything because I just couldn't find it anymore when trying to research. Saki Sanobashi Heavy Metal, Asher Sly. Sly, slee, sly, sly, sly. I don't know which one. A video where someone takes my intro and turns it into metal. It's kind of funny because the intro soundtrack only has like two notes, but the guitar is pretty badass. Introduction anime concept, Saki Sanobashi, Go For A Punch by Andres Caleron Barco. So this one's basically a title animation with the same black background, red text, and yellow subtitles with Go For A Punch, just with the different font and effects. There have been so many of these title animations that copy this similar style just like my original one, but I can't take credit for that because I mean, it's it, it really is just a simple look. Tier 9 Saki Sanobashi, Go For A Punch, OP, ED, Hedonist Wizard. These are yet another two title animations created by... Well, as of writing this, they changed their name to Agent Del Sim. Alright. It's the same red text and black background, but this time, they also made an ending credit. So that's a, that's a plus one. That's it. Niyanakaru, Saki Sanobashi. Another song with Saki Sanobashi is its title. This one is actually pretty unique, though. It's a metal, hardcore, composed track with some, like, breakcore elements. <laughs> For what it is, it's actually pretty well composed. And this is coming from a producer like myself who's dabbled in the core genres as well. And what's even cooler to me is the fact that they even got a comment from Ace with themselves, who is like this break core, speed core, extra tone, super tone legend. And that's pretty fucking cool. I like this kind of music, so I'm definitely adding this one to my playlist, but I can definitely understand if not everyone is into it. Dreams for the Future, Galaxy Infinitum. It's a simple GIF animation with accompanying music showing Saki all smiling before glitching into a version of her crying and covered in blood. I remember this thing exclusively on TikTok, but luckily it was also on YouTube, so it's pretty short and there's nothing much to say here either. Delete Arisu, Saki Senobashi. Another song with Saki in the title. It's a vaporwave song with jazzy riff and pitch down vocals. You slash Mandark Ice Boy. This was an artist who posted a lot of their art on the majority of Saki servers, even the more vacant ones like r slash Saki Senobashi fan art. But they still made a lot of it, so it was enough for someone like me to notice. So here they are Saki Senobashi OVA OP, Chino Siberia. This is a small animation intro video that mostly showcases the plethora of images and a little bit of head and eye animation of who I assume is Saki. Just another short. Saki animation. Like, Jesus fucking Christ! Two weeks! Two weeks! The girl who dies, Saki Sanobashi. This is either in reference to a meme in Know Your Meme or a story that was on Wattpad that had long been deleted and cannot be recovered. All I remember about this is that someone on Discord wrote a five chapter story in relation to Saki under that title. It wasn't anything incredible, but the premise was unique compared to other Saki Sanobashi stories, where every girl was in their own version of a bathroom by themselves, and based on what they did to themselves would allow them different access to communicate with each other. 
I remember reading this one part where like two girls breathed on the mirrors and wrote words to communicate. But I can't find a trace of this anymore. Boo hoo. Saki Sake, Necronomidol Cocktail, Wea Brews. A channel that makes drinks based on anime, Wea Brews gives us our very own signature sake drink with inspiration by the Necronomidol music video. The main ingredients for this cocktail are a white mix of sake to represent the white bathroom, shot of vodka, two shots of vodka, <laughs> cherries to represent each girl, Red food coloring for the blood. And a piece of broken glass. Warning, do not attempt this drink by any means. Even if you do remove the glass and only take the drink, there's still a chance that some pieces of just don't drink anything that has come into contact with any type of glass, okay? For your safety. Tier 10. Un gran caso de Seki Sanobashi, un llamado desde el cielo. This is another song about Saki Sanobashi that's basically a grunge song with lots of downplay and breaks. No more, no less. Saki Sanobashi opening, fan made, Alex A. And yet another opening animation with red text, black background, and yellow subtitles. But the reason I placed this one at the bottom is that compared to the other openings, this one is... Eh, man, I don't know how to explain it. There's no fading, no movement, nothing. Just pops the title, and that's a weird-ass beat. You slash deleted. This pertains to one certain artist who created what most believe is the most impressive Saki Sanobashi art. Even today, people still confuse this person's art to clues in the search despite being debunked again and again. And like this says, there's no knowing who this artist was. They came in, made some incredible art, and dipped. What a mystery, huh? Maybe someone like Saki Sanobashi OP will come in and claim to be the artist, who knows. Saki Sanobashi Visual Novel, LibDev71. This is a project proposed by LibDev in which they want to create Saki Sanobashi as an interactive visual novel experience. They've actually showcased several screenshots of the work so far and the art is pretty good. Whether they're still working on this or not is up for the debate. Maybe they'll see this like others have and comment some updates of the project, but I'm sure many here would love to see a visual novel where they can play as one of the many girls and do some fucked up girl shit. I don't know, what do girls do? Do they fucking commit war crimes or something? I don't remember. Amino, Tumblr, Wattpad, Saki Stories. This pertains to a whole umbrella of written Saki Sanobashi fan stories in either of these three sites. I remember a lot of people in either the Reddit or the Discord linking us to their stories, but I never had time to read all of them. Many have since been deleted, moved to another place, or just hidden deep in the canals of obscurity. But still, I'm sure they can be found, but the majority of it is just fan interpretations of the Saki lore. Claustro, u slash mkl underscore 2056. Oof, where to start with this one? Claustro is a short film project by Reddit user u slash mkl underscore 2056, which is inspired by the Saki Sanobashi lore, but the story is completely derivative. Instead of nine girls trapped in the bathroom, the story centers around one man in a bathroom with a handheld camera looking for an exit as starvation and insanity slowly consumes him. The style of the film would be in a 3D blender format, adding VHS effects and clever lighting to make it look realistic, like found footage similar to Kane Pixel's Backroom series. Overall, a super ambitious project, but that was posted four months ago, so again, there's no knowing if the project is still being worked on or not. Hopefully, the person who creates this sees this and can clear us up on it. Saki Sanobashi, J. Lauren24. One of the funniest animated shit posts ever. I still visit this video every time I come across it. I just can't help it. This shit is just funny as shit. And it's just a great shit post overall. Fucking hilarious. I recommend anyone and everyone to fish this one out because this shit makes me laugh every fucking time. 10 out of 10, the most honest to God recreation ever made. Nobody can compete with this level of genius, not even me. Corpse Husband Saki Rapped Out NP4. This is a video of a dude who raps like Corpse Husband about Saki Sanobashi. The lyrics were definitely like discussing the story and everything, and I remember seeing a link to it, but since then the link is dead and I haven't found any re-uploads of the video. 
It literally just showed a dude like rapping or something like in his super dark basement with like a groaning voice about bitches in the bathroom and shit. Like super 2014 or something. I don't know. It's It's been so long ago. Saki Sanobashi, Demiurge. A song with Saki in the title. Funk track with low groaning vocals. Super spooky shit. Fucking pile of shit. Definitely give Saki Sanobashi vibes if Saki was like a trap artist. Help, help, help. This only references two images on Tumblr. No other clue as to what this is. Film core. Ooh, shit, this is gonna be a doozy. Okay, so there's really no fucking reason for this thing to be on this iceberg because Film core was the distributor for Lady in the Sea of Blood as well as other low budget gore fetish films. The only connection with Saki is the chance that they might have created the original based on rumors made up by Chris Abel and their entire Twisted Anger debacle. We'll get to Chris Abel in a minute. So even if there was a creation, this isn't a Fran creation, so having this here is pointless. So why is it here? Because of one post in particular. A theory. See, even with the lies Chris Abel told us, there were still credible sources like Brutality Will Rule 666 and others who have heard rumors of the adaptations of Lady in the Sea of Blood. Of course, the idea of a short film with such a low budget having the money of an animated adaptation is something to not even ponder about. So it's not even worth mentioning because the premise of Lady in the Sea of Blood and Saki Sanobashi are two completely different things. But the fact that multiple sources also confirm the same rumor? Too many for coincidence. That leads to the idea that Film Corp probably took another short indie animated project, changed the name to something stupid like Go For A Punch, and sold that as the copy. Again, very far-fetched idea. But when it comes to distribution rights and companies selling anime to the West in the 1980s, it's pretty plausible given how many anime, even ones from major studios, had their copyrights fumbled and fucked with so many bootlegs being sold to small underground anime clubs. So many that maybe even Saki Senobashi could have been some indie project stolen without a license and redistributed in addition to Lady in the Sea of Blood. I mean, I have seen some really shit hentai, like really bad, like even worse than what I make. And it still gets sold around and stuff like that. Is it plausible that somebody made some sort of fan project and it was repackaged and resold under film core? Again, this can't really be considered a fan creation, but what if Saki Sanobashi as a project itself was just another fan creation? Again, we'll never know since film core just got harassed into oblivion and just refuses to contact anybody now. Little Vision, Saki Sanobashi. Best way I can describe this one is a dark lo-fi rap song. Rap song. Although it's hard to hear, you can at least understand enough words to know the song stays true to its title. Team Saki Lost Scripts. Believe it or not, there were at least six different scripts during the initial production of Team Saki. Only three of them survived after purging two discords, and a fuck up on my computer deleted the third one. Now only two scripts remain, and that was just by pure stupid luck that I had them on a folder in my phone. Yeah, my cheap Samsung phone saved two scripts. And while I say six, that's not to mention the iterations of each script, usually just changes to whole scenes or a little dialogue. So you'd have script files saying Saki script 4.7.2 version 3-2, or something like that. Each script tackled a different concept, like one being focused more on the bathroom as an entity, or another one being purely drama-centered, and then one just being completely just about gore, like just as much gore as you can add, like it didn't even have to make sense. Just testing things out, you know, getting some ideas. Of course, most were, again, ideas, but there were several good concepts that were mixed in the bunch that hopefully I can add in later. But most of it is gone now, and nobody gives a shit. Chris Abel. Okay, 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 hear me out. I don't know how most of y'all feel about Chris Abel besides the ones involved in the Twisted Anger drama at the time and got duped, but probably most of you are questioning why I placed their name on this iceberg when they didn't create anything. Ah, but they did. Technically, if you think about it, they created an ARG. Okay, I know some of y'all are gonna scoff at that like, no bitch, he lied to us and wasted our time. Yes, yes he did. But you gotta admit, had it not been for what he did, we would have never gotten that third Wayne video. And he took an urban legend, added some details like film core, Lady in the Sea of Blood, Twisted Anger, 
the four links for the dark web. All of this is literally the basis for an ARG. And yeah, our time got wasted. But I also felt that during that time, it was also when fan creations were kind of like forming and the excitement of all these clues got a lot of people making. Nah, you know what? I'm not even going to continue that one. That was just literally just me talking my, out of my ass. Look, say what you want about Chris Abel, but he technically did make a Saki Sanobashi Lost Media ARG for a while and had us running like my searching for clues that he planted. So, bravo. Saki's Room, Go For A Punch Original Soundtrack by Ranbu. A 43 minute soundtrack designed for Saki Sanobashi on YouTube. This was a personal project created as a fan of work of the type of music that could have played in an 80s anime. The soundtrack presents this dark but light synth style music with some strings, plucks, and lots of piano. The composition and style of the music briefly reminded me of old school dungeon synth music with its harrowing melodies. Of all the songs, my favorites definitely had to be the opening and ending credit songs, since for me they encapsulate the whole cinematic feel than the rest of the songs that feel kind of more like they'd play an exposition element in your typical 24 episode anime. Nevertheless, a decent musical project that is often overlooked. Saki Sonobashi, SoundCloud rapper. Yes, there is a rapper from Brazil who goes by Saki Sonobashi. I'm not making this shit up. And their music is pretty much how you'd picture a rapper on SoundCloud by the name of Saki Sonobashi would sound. Mellow tunes, distorted basses, and lo-fi rapping. I know this person hasn't made anything in relation to Saki Sonobashi. I just thought it would be funny to add a random ass rapper to finish the iceberg list cuz... I mean come on, it's Saki Sonobashi the rapper! And now for more artists who were not mentioned in the original list. Go For A Punch by Mist. A weird ass song with a vaporwave feel, but it's much more in line with that kind of music you see associated with backrooms. What was the genre called again? Alright. Weirdcore. Saki Sanobashi, Overdose Fantasy. This is the video that shows a compilation of images and clips all being played in succession to a backing break chord track, creating this weird, ominous, and confusing AMV. But I gotta say, the clips might be from different sources, but it definitely kind of like all put together really kind of at least conveys a somewhat of an idea of Saki Senobashi. So it reminds me a lot of old school weird ass 2000 music videos that you'd accidentally come across one night just scrolling through channels. Just overall kind of weird. Saki Sanobashi, Go For A Punch, Fan Recreation Intro, Thrill Sun. While there's no sources to confirm this officially, I see this one as the, f as the first fan project that started it all. The first fan creation of Saki Sanobashi. I say this because I remember seeing this clip before ever uploading my opening intro animation way back then. And this one popped off. Although it's strange how it got deleted and re-uploaded by the same user two years later, but yes, before all the black background and red text intros, there was Thrill Sun. Pentex, Go For A Punch, full album. Another full length OST album of Saki Sanobashi, clocking in at 34 minutes. This one goes more for ambience than anything else, channeling Akira Yamaoka vibes with its industrial and disgusting sound design complementing the weird sounds circulating through each track. Now when I think of music for a dark underground 80s lost guru anime, this is what I'm talking about. But, given it was the 80s, I don't think it would have sounded like this anyways. Nonetheless, this album has a more cataclysmic and chaotic feel to any other music in the Saki fandom. My favorite tracks from this album include Trapped, This Wasn't Supposed to Happen, Keep Lost Hope, and False Power, The End. This one feels much more like a concept album than an OST for an anime, as from the track titles, not to mention the Message Home tracks where you hear a girl talking, presents a more linear story to each song, Although some songs that feel misplaced in this album like the glitchy mess that was guilt. But in the end I'd say this is a pretty well rounded album. That's it for this iceberg. Again, sorry for literally not updating anything. 
I've just been going through problems in life and everything is just moving too fast. Some days I don't even want to get up out of bed and do anything anymore. That'll happen to anyone who thought they were going on the right path for years, only to suddenly start over again and you have to just now live a completely different life that you just don't want. See you later.